you probably noticed, but everything changed recently. And a lot of us, well, we're now working from home. And I don't know if you've thought about this, but in a lot of cases, that now means that we've all got, well, in a lot of cases, we've all got a lot of expensive stuff now in our homes that wasn't there before. And have you considered how much more break-inable and burglar, burglarable is not a word, Neil, but how much more break-inable your house has now become to Dave, the local scroty scumbag. Well, if you haven't, uh, you can bet your bollocks to a barn dance that he has. And I know watching him and catching him are two completely different things, but it's, it's always good to have a visual deterrent. And can you just imagine how you'd feel if it happened to you and how much you'd wish you just bought the damn camera after a full or even a, a, an attempted break into your property? But before that, this video is brought to you by me and Autodesk. Kind of, but I'm not selling anything. What? Uh, if you're thinking about subscribing to a new Autodesk software license anytime soon, or if you're soon to be renewing an existing Autodesk subscription that you've already got, please do consider using my TFI paid referral link, which is in the description. That'll take you to your local Autodesk store. It won't cost you any more to subscribe using my link, but I'll get a little cut of the commission, which will serve as vital support for the channel. Thank you very much in advance for your consideration. Links in the description. Just to set the scene, around three years ago, having never heard of EasyViz at all, there was a pretty good deal on at this UK retailer. So I took a punt. The market material looked competent, which at the time seemed like a bit of a bonus. So I bought four of the cameras. So three internal and one external camera. Uh, then I also bought one of the DVR boxes, uh, NVR box, the called network video recorder. And that records all of the camera feeds onto this box on a hard drive and it's kept in the house. Now, I am really, really conflicted at this point, like genuinely. I've absolutely loved my EasyViz system for the full three years that I've had it running across the entirety of that time. And it was actually me that got in touch with EasyViz to arrange this video. Uh, it's usually the other way around, but because uh, of the price of the cameras, I feel like based off my own experience, they're, they're just a no-brainer for a first time, you know, getting into home CCTVs. So EasyViz sent out their C3 and Outdoor Wi-Fi Smart CCTV cameras, a new model, and for the past six weeks, I've had an absolutely hellish, savage horror show of a time with it. But that doesn't mean that you will. It's a stunningly stupendous piece of equipment for the price. And if you just want a plug and play camera without fiddling with anything, then it's mind bendingly good. But if you are that guy and you just want to get the best out of it, you want to play with the settings and you've got maybe an existing ecosystem of easy viz hardware to add it into, well then it's not just plug and play. It's destination Bugsville via the fiery pits of cheapo software hell sponsored by the Royal Bank of Complications. But I'm gonna go into all that. That's why this video is as long as this is a long one, it really is. Uh, and, and don't just take my word for it either. Try and get a, a full rounded opinion, you know, make an informed decision. Just go visit other channels. Uh, Paul Hibbert's a good one to get videos like this. And he does a far better job than I ever could. Now, easy biz, they've got tons of different camera types, internal and external. And you'll see some of them in this video because I've got them running in my house and I'm going to show you the full ecosystem as well. But I'm focusing mainly on the C3N outdoor camera. Is it any good? What's the image quality like? Is it expensive? How does it record? Things like that. Ultimately, should you buy it? Is it worth it? But we'll start with the stats. It's IP67 rated up to 1080p resolution with a color night vision mode. It's AI human detection triggers. It's got H265 compression, kind of. And it feeds over ethernet cable or 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi to whichever monitoring application that you want to use, either the mobile app or the PC studio. But it's missing one crucial thing that some people might find a deal breaker, and that is it doesn't have any audio or you know two-way audio speakers built into the camera. There's a few options for how you record to it, uh, but most people are going to use the SD card or the cloud storage, but you can record to the DVR box like I do. And either way, it's all displayed through the mobile app. Speaking of mobile apps and PC studios, just a very quick word on that. EasyViz will want and will expect new customers to solely use their mobile app, which for the most part does most things that you want, but it's missing so much. In fact, some things on the camera just didn't work at all. It's flat outright were broken until I got a hold of the Windows-based PC Studio app and then began smashing the buttons. So I'll talk about that as well. And the price, 
it's going to vary from day to day depending on when and where you look. You know, Amazon thing. It retails at the moment for around seventy nine ninety nine UK pounds, which is a stunning deal. But even better in the US, you can get it for fifty dollars. Which, for as much as I'm going to complain and rant across the course of this video, it's still a monumentally phenomenally good product at this price point. The camera body itself is exceptionally well built. EasyViz have done a great job in providing drill template with three screws and wall plugs, which you need to mount the C3N to the outside of your house. The mounting hardware is solid. It stays exactly where you put it. It's hardwired to the power though, meaning that you are gonna bore a hole into your house to get the power cable in, which is gonna make it a bit awkward for renters, but you're probably used to that if you rent a house. There's two external Wi-Fi antenna along with motion triggered spotlights. The SD card slot is on the underside of the camera behind the cover held in place with two small Phillips head screws and the adjustability of the C3N is damn near perfect. You can point and place it wherever you want, tighten it up and it'll stay there pretty much perpetually. So no issues there. Apart from that, there's nothing much else really interesting with the actual body of the camera. It's mostly all to do with this software. And by far the main strength pretty much of all EasyViz's cameras in their range is that picture quality. Mate, it is incredible. Uh, it's, I mean, it's never going to challenge a flagship mobile phone camera, OVS, but for CCTV, mate, this is outstanding. Look at it. The C3N can stream to your phone and record up to a 1080p feed with, with lower resolutions being available. But, and this is an equal part of good and a bad thing, the key to unlocking the best potential out of the camera is to download the EasyViz PC Studio application, which they don't mention anywhere in any of the manuals or any of the marketing material. And for all intents and purposes, this, this damn thing doesn't even exist. It's pretty, but it's pretty mandatory in some cases. And then even after you've managed to find this hidden application, you then need to tweak an XML file that's hidden to get access to a hidden bunch of settings in this hidden PC studio program. It's mental. And then that'll gain you access to a massive stack of parameters, which lets you adjust pretty vital things that a camera does, like the recording bit rate, make it variable or constant up to four megabits per second, even though the market material says it only supports two megabits per second. You can adjust the frame rate, through PC Studio, which maxes out at 22 frames per second on the C3, and even the market material says 30 frames per second. And I've no idea what that means. <laughs> not in any way, regardless. It's, it's easy to think, well, wow, it's a camera. I'll just crank everything up to the max. Why wouldn't you? Well, what you've got to consider is that it's an external camera, so it's normally going to be positioned on the outside of your house, on the other side of very thick brickwork, and the signal's got to come through the brickwork and find its way to your router, which might be behind lots of walls and objects. So. You know, the more settings you've applied, the better the quality, the bigger the file size, the more space it takes up on an SD card, the less history you've got, that kind of thing. So compromises. But back to the image quality, mate, it's breathtaking. And one challenge of any CCTV system is making sure the camera isn't overexposed. And this is where you can start to mess around with settings. So, for example, when the sun's got his hat on, uh, within the PC studio, they've allowed you to dial in directional backlight compensation. So if the top half of the frame is mostly in sunlight all day, well, then you can adjust the compensation to lower the exposure so that bit isn't as blown out. Uh, or there's WDR mode. And this is sadly where things start to unravel a bit for EasyViz because there's absolutely zero documentation or advice on what WDR does or anything else for that matter. To be brutally honest, this entire PC studio is a complete enigma, but I believe WDR stands for Wide Dynamic Range. And I fast learned that you can't have that and backlight compensation enabled at the same time. So that they're, they're apparently related and conflict with each other. So that's a case of playing with both and settling for what you think suits what your camera's pointed at over the course of a full day, which is great. All of these settings, WDR, backlight compensation, you know, they let you dial in the perfect image based on what your camera has to deal with over the course of a day. This is awesome. But tragically for EasyViz, neither of these crucially important settings are available in their flagship mobile application, which EasyViz push very, very strongly as the main entry point to their cameras. And the, the app, the mobile app's not terrible by any stretch. It's just scarce and a bit derelict in contrast to the PC studio. Uh, it's kind of fine once you've got the camera dialed in and set up how you want it in the early days. But in the early days, you really need that PC studio. And, I've, and that thing is, I've seen videos from other YouTubers showing these settings like backlight compensation as being adjustable in the mobile app, but for other cameras, cheaper cameras. So why is it there for them and not this one when backlight compensation is a valid feature on this camera that you 
goddamn well need, but it's a genuine use case. It's confusing as hell, but it's a pretty consistent theme here. Anyway, picture quality, mate, phenomenal. And even, right, this, see, this is the thing. Even if you leave the picture quality as factory default and you didn't know any better, you didn't tweak any settings, it'll still exceed most people's expectations. It's just the sheer quantity of settings available in PC Studio. Ah, it can get overwhelming, but like I said, for the most part, if you're happy enough with what you're seeing, you can just leave it all alone. One thing I will say on the image quality though is don't expect magical miracles from this thing when it comes to like reading number plates from fast moving vehicles, which is something that I think a lot of people might want to buy this kind of a camera for. It will read a number plate if the vehicle is sort of pulling front on up to the camera slowly, but that's pretty much the only scenario where you will actually catch a reg plate. Any other real world setting, it will not. Fast moving objects, even with the bitrate dialed right the way up to the max, it's gonna distort the number plates, especially at like the top area of the frame, because it's a fisheye lens. So reg plates at a distance, they're not gonna get picked up. They're too small of a detail. If you've bought the camera just to look at number plates and you're pointing it directly at a road and you lower the frame rate, then you might be able to pick it up. But you just have to bear in mind, you know, it's a CCTV camera, the, arc, the image is compressed in a CCTV camera and that tends to rear its ugly head when things move fast. So uh, your mileage may vary, but uh, a super important feature of most CCTV cameras though is its ability to capture footage at night because that's where naughty people do naughty things. Now, if I'm being honest, mate, one of the reasons why I did this video and what fueled it was in addition to the working from home use case is because someone that I know who lives uncomfortably close to me up the street had his car petrol bombed right outside his house. Uh, he had his own inconclusive footage of what happened, but after asking around his neighbours, this is the best footage that he could get of the scumbag who torched his car. And it's... And what? What's that? What's that you say? You, you can't see... Th you can't see... You can't see... I, I know, that's the point! You literally cannot see the top half of the dude's body. You've got a camera pointing at him, and you can't even see there's a human there. What's the point of going through the hassle and the aggro of putting a camera up on your house? And then that's what you get when you need to use it. But being pragmatic, clearly there's people out there who think that's the best a camera can do at night. <laughs> it really isn't. That's kind of one of the reasons why I feel this camera is such a good shout. The C3N defies all the known laws of science to me when it comes to night vision. Seriously, it's spectacular how clear and defined this camera is at night. But with the night vision comes more confusion. And I wish I only knew what the mobile app had to offer when it comes to night vision settings. It would make this video a lot simpler. So in the mobile app, there's three night vision modes. You've got basic, bog standard, black and white night vision. Fine, that's it. And then you've got color night vision, which makes it color, but then it turns the spotlights on permanently for some reason. I don't know why. And then the final option, is what they call smart night vision mode. So it puts everything into black and white, and then when the camera detects motion, it turns the spotlights on when the motion is detected and makes things color. And then when the motion's gone, it goes back to black and white. So those are your three options in the mobile app. And wouldn't life be just dandy if that was it? Well, this is where EasyViz really need to do better because in the PC Studio app, you get a confusingly conflicting set of different night vision options all together, uh, and they clash with what's in the mobile app. And it took me weeks to figure out what this all meant, along, along with the camera being completely broken as well on day one. So in the PC Studio, you can actually force the camera into a permanent state of colour night vision, which I'm sure most people would agree looks much better than black and white. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? But it doesn't have the spotlights always on. Why can't you do that in the mobile app? Why can't you just have colour without spotlights? That surely is a option a lot of people would actually want to have. And all you do is go to this option here in the PC Studio and change it to day mode. But annoyingly, the mobile app has absolutely no visibility or no awareness that that setting exists. So when you go to the mobile app, it just sticks to whatever setting you last set it at. Also, and this is definitely something easy to need to sort out, all jokes aside, and sort out quick. Because where I live, it's not unusual outside. It's a pretty basic UK street. There's street lighting out front and lampposts. And when I first mounted the camera, to the front of my house, night vision on the C3N, totally broken. Flat out didn't work. Spots did not come on when movement was detected. It didn't go to black and white night mode. The mobile app was ignoring all the night vision settings completely. It just stayed color night vision all night and the spotlights totally disabled. I genuinely thought the camera was broken. I spent hours upon hours trying all sorts to fix this and apparently EasyViz support as well were totally stumped. 
So anyway, regardless, eventually I figured out the solution and that was to go into, obviously, <laughs> duh, to, to go into the PC studio and increase the exposure value here from 125 to 150. I mean, the a setting yet again, there's no documentation for, no idea what it does, no idea what it means or how it affects anything in context of this camera. And crucially, it's a setting that's not available in the mobile app. Why? But that fixed the entire camera night vision. So I had to figure that out myself. It took me ages. I can't get that time back. <laughs> and where I live, apparently it just didn't get dark enough for the C3N to detect that day turn to night. So the camera at that time was just permanently stuck in day mode. This smart camera couldn't tell when day turned to night because the street lighting where I live, oh, I don't know. It's like, and do you know what's really annoying is that in the PC studio, there is actually a slider for night or day to night sensitivity. That didn't make any difference at all. That's why I didn't think it was that in the first place. Make no difference. So apparently I live in the land of the midnight sun. That's, it doesn't, doesn't it look like it? Avert your eyes, young lad. You were blinded. So <laughs> the point of this being any users of the C3N who are only using the mobile app may never get their C3N to work at night if they live in an area with street lighting and they might just not know any different. They might not know it's supposed to have spotlights. Of course, unless you watch this video, but yeah, the critical setting needed to fix that is hidden in PC Studio, which is hidden. And then you have to go to the hidden XML to edit that to enable the hidden advanced settings then enable exposure to change the exposure setting that there's no documentation. None of this is okay, easy biz. it really isn't. But in the event that you don't have any day to night continuity issues, continu continuity issues, then the night mode is actually staggeringly good. Even in black and white mode, the scene, look, I mean, look at it, it's, de it's defined. Details are there. Everything's as crisp as you would ever want it. And then when it goes to color vision, mate, mind is blown. How is this even possible? It captures, in my opinion, more than you'd expect a $50 camera to ever be able to capture. Yeah, it's great. It's a bit grainy, the image, but then this is where PC Studio joins the chat. You reduce the brightness a bit, you know, adjust the digital noise reduction, you know, the things that aren't in the mobile app. <laughs> and then you get it how you want it, and then you just leave it alone for the rest of the time that you own the camera. Uh, the motion detection, well, that's quite a key element of this equation. And as advertised, it has human detection routines, which are Far from perfect, but I don't know, it works well. It worked well enough so far for me. You do get a lot of false alarms and heavy rain, even on medium sensitivity. Things raindrops are humans for some reason, but turning down the sensitivity seems to fix it. But uh, and also for the mo uh, the motion detection, allegedly it's like a thirty foot range from the camera, but that's not easy to confirm. That was just some other video that I saw. But basically, what you do is you mark out an area within the camera frame that you only care about. In my case, that'll be the front drive because obviously I don't really care about people walking over the street. And then what happens is the camera will only detect motion within that boundary. And then I set up a notification schedule, say nine, in the, nine at night to six in the morning. And then what happens if the camera detects a human within that marked area, within that time frame, it pings a notification to my phone along with a thumbnail of what happened and then a link to that recorded clip. And then on the live feed, It'll also outline the human detection in a cute little red box. This is cool, I guess, but uh, you know, unless you've got a proper mental chaotic frame, I don't know how you miss a human with your own bare eyes, but uh, And whether it's supposed to or not, and whether it's a, a good thing or not, I don't know, but the camera still seems to record activity over the road, even though that's not a defined marked area. So like if someone rides a bike past the house at 5 p.m. on the other side of the road, it'll still record that. I just won't get notification spam for it, but I don't mind that. The notifications themselves, they're pretty quick, snappy, come to your phone pretty fast, can't complain. And I love that it gives you this thumbnail and a quick shortcut to jump to the footage of what happened. That saves you hours of scrubbing through that video feed timeline, which honestly is horrible to do. Uh, it's more amateur software issues that I'll talk about later. Heading off to that main mobile app, right? This page here is the main area where most users will be managing the C3N. And you know, it's, it's better than it was. EasyBiz have rolled out quite a few app overhauls over the years, so it's better than it used to be. There's a bunch of icons here that look like they've been lifted right out of an Android icon pack, but they're clean enough, no nonsense. Video history icon takes you to the timeline where you can review your previous trigger recordings. Snapshot takes a still image from the camera, like a photograph. Record begins a manually triggered recording to your app's album, which you can then download to your phone, which is, which is nice. Uh, active defense is absolutely pointless. It just flashes the spotlights on demand. Uh, definition. 
that changes the resolution of the camera, but I think it's just the stream to your phone. It doesn't change the actual recording resolution. But then who knows, because there's very little documentation. And then multi-screen is like a neat way to view all of your cameras in one layout, which is, again, kind of nice to have if you've got lots of cameras. And we haven't even talked about recording options yet. Well, you've got four. Uh, yeah, kind of four. The cheapest, but the most unrealistic and stupid option, if you can even call this an option, would be to just buy the camera and then don't record anything. You can actually do that if you want. That is an option. Uh, it'll, it'll act as a visual deterrent on the wall, sure. Uh, and then you can just monitor the live feed using the mobile app, but the, just the footage won't be recorded. So, uh, you know, each to their own. Second option, still not super reliable, but it will work. And that would be to drop an SD card into the slot on the underside of the camera up to 256 gig, and then record the footage straight onto the SD card. The recording works on a loop. So once it's filled up that card, it'll begin recording over the oldest footage. And then you can review the content of what's on the SD card using the video history in the mobile app which is nice. You don't have to take the card out of the camera to view the footage. That's nice. Recording the SD card is actually really good. It's stable and it's reliable. It doesn't drop out. There's no jumps and freezes. It's stable, which is really good. The downside of all this is someone can just rip your camera off the wall and do away with your footage, which, you know, yeah. Uh, the third option for recording is the one that I opted for. This is the one I prefer. And it's also been an absolute shambolic circus pairing my option up with the C3N and that is to use the local DVR box with a physical mechanical hard drive in. The DVR that I've got is EasyVis's own X5C Vault box with a four terabyte hard disk in. So what you do is you link all your cameras up to the box with a record to that, and you can still record and view the footage on the mobile app. And I preferred this because it's all bought and paid for. I bought the box, I bought the hard drive, and all the traffic from the cameras to the box all within my local network, and I'm in control of it. I prefer that. Downside of course is, sure, someone can break into the house, find the box, trash it, do away with it, but it's less likely than someone ripping the camera off the wall, you know. And, and, and overall, it's my problem to deal with, you know, it's my responsibility to hide the box well enough, so, and I prefer it that way. Easy Viz though, well, they've stopped selling these DVR boxes, but you can still pick them up from retailers who've got them left in stock. Alternatively, if you've got the technical ability and you will need a lot of it, you can maybe link the cameras to a surveillance app on a on whatever NAS box you've got currently using. I personally can't vouch for any of that I've tried and got to work, so you'd have to do some research on that. Easy don't like to advertise what protocols and supported capabilities the cameras have, and I don't want to state that because I, I don't know enough about that stuff, so you'd have to do some research on that and find channels that are better at that than I am. Uh, the final recording option though that you've got is what EasyViz would of course prefer that you opt for and that would be to use one of their cloud subscription recording plans because recurring revenue is the best revenue. They call it cloud play. Basically, uh, you, this works by subscribing to a, a monthly year or a yearly fee and then the camera records a feed up to their cloud servers in a country that I'm sure it's a growing list of countries and then you can view your feed on the mobile app. Benefits of that of course being the data is totally untouchable, can't be lost by the guy trashing your house. It's all seamlessly integrated into the mobile app with zero efforts to set it up and it really is, it works seamlessly, it works flawlessly. Downsides being you've got to keep paying after you've bought the camera which nobody likes to do. Uh, a bit of a conflict of interest there and whether the price is expensive or not depends entirely on you and how valuable you find your home security and of course, there's the argument of where's my camera footage being stored and who's looking at it? Uh, you know, it's an argument which honestly, personally, I don't really care about because I'm not that interesting. But if you are, then I'm sure you're big enough of a deal to get some fast answers to those pertinent questions. So I don't know. The cheapest plan for a single camera is $2.99 per month. That gets you three days of stored video history into the cloud. So you've always got three days to look back on and then the price goes up from there. I think you can get like seven days of video history as well. About, about, EasyViz really did ruin my day here with the whole storage thing and unfortunately completely changed my outlook and overview and feels on the C3N. Like I said, I bought the DVR box. EasyViz's own DVR box and all my cameras record that. And they said, they still say that the C3N works just fine with the DVR box. That is still being sold in some retailers today, but it doesn't. The C3N does not work with this box. It, it's actually completely unusable to the point where I have to say to anyone watching this, if you've got an EasyViz DVR box, do not buy the C3N under any circumstances until they potentially update it. Look, all the market material states that the C3N does support it. It even says, although it's an H.265 based camera, the C3N still supports H.264. It says the DVR box 
just needs the camera changed to 264 and you'll be cush. EasyViz themselves say that the C3N indeed links to the DVR and it does, it connects, it records, just like all your other cameras, except this is what you get. This is what the C3N looks like when it's recording to the DVR box. And this is what you should have got. That on the right is the exact same H.264 codec feed being recorded to the SD card. I don't know what happens, mate, but when the motion detection triggers kicks in, the DVR box just loses its friggin' mind and the footage disintegrates. And that's not a one-off. That happens to literally every single clip. So when I said right back at this very start, I had a hellish time with this camera. Well, that's kind of what I meant. It's taken me six weeks to figure out why and just what the hell is wrong with this camera. And to be honest, easy for support of being, well, let's just say less informed than I have over that time. But look, if you don't plan on using a DVR box, which you're probably not, then you won't experience any of these issues and you'll genuinely, you'll just have a, you'll have a great time with the C3 and it really is a great camera. So look, I feel like I've complained a lot here and that's purely because my experience has been dreadful and Sure, I could have just reviewed the camera in complete isolation as a camera on its own with nothing else going on, but you know what, that wouldn't have been fair. I, could, I couldn't have done that knowing how I'd experienced it. Uh, but all in, right, if you are Joe or Mary Muck looking for their first camera from scratch, TM, then genuinely, I massively do recommend the C3N. Like I said, the majority of my complaints are just purely from pairing it up with existing EasyViz equipment, which if you don't have, then you've got nothing to worry about. That, that'll do. Uh, thanks for watching. If, get, just get yourself a camera. If you haven't done it already, $50, it's peace, the peace of mind to be able to sign into your account and view the front of your house or view the inside of your house. If you spend maybe $30 or $40 on an internal camera, it makes a huge difference. And that visual deterrent as well just might make the difference as well for an opportunist thief walking past. So if you're thinking to yourself, hang on a minute, you sound like you're wrapping this up, why is there a couple of minutes left? Yeah, I'm not quite finished yet with my ranting, sorry. I need to get some stuff off my chest. So if that was it, if that's all you needed to hear, camera's great. <laughs> Definitely suggest you buy one. Links are in the description. There are Amazon affiliate links, take you straight to the sales page. If that's you done, thanks very much for watching. In the meantime, easy viz, I've got a message for you. Right, I'm sorry, but your entire software experience is absolutely infuriating. It's unsettling, confusing, and frustrating. Occasionally, I'll get a notification spammed at 2 a.m. saying that a human has been detected in my front garden. No human, that's fine, I've mentioned that. But in a frantic, panicked state, I want to urgently view to make sure, but the software, your mobile app, frequently just flat out fails to play the video history. It is absolutely infuriating and scrubbing through the history timeline when it does work is an exercise in rage management. I swear, if you move your finger one way on the timeline, the flipping timeline moves the other way. If you touch the screen on the timeline to begin scrubbing, the goddamn timeline jumps forward five minutes. Try and be precise about where you want to view the history from. <laughs> You lost your mind, you're joking. Come on, the mobile app doesn't even let you change the camera frame rate or the bit rate or the video quality. What even is video quality? Why is this setting here? Isn't that the bitrate? What does a video quality setting do that the bitrate, codec, and frames per second don't possibly do? The mobile app doesn't let you adjust image properties, critical camera values like sharpness, brightness, saturation, exposure, backlight compensation, noise reduction. Did you know the C3N has an adjustable digital noise reduction at a spectral, in a temporal level? Probably not because it's nowhere to be found in the mobile app. It's, these are serious, there are seriously confusing inconsistencies just within the PC Studio program. Like, why does the actual C3N have its own page of video quality settings? Yet when I go to my DVR box, where the video is actually being recorded, there's a completely separate additional page of video quality settings for the same camera, but they're, they're set to different values. Why does the PC Studio frequently tell me that my camera isn't on the same LAN as the PC? I'm looking at the goddamn camera. It is on the same LAN. And unfortunately, the PC Studio, some of us have to go there to export our footage from our DVR boxes. You know what? That's not strictly true. You can not export footage off the DVR box itself because the DVR box has its own operating system. That is another level of software evil and I don't think anyone should be subjected to. Do not ever go there. But I think we should leave it there. <laughs> Calm down. Calm down, Neil. Right, we're good. 
got that off my chest. Easy this. You've got a great product here. You've got a great ecosystem. It's just your software experience is absolutely tragic. Please sort that out. I think you could be genuinely onto a winner here. But for everyone else, if you're looking to buy the C3N camera, ah, you know, yeah, I like the rant, you know. Oh. But the cameras are great. They really are good quality. They give you a good feed. And yeah, I highly recommend them. Links are in the description. I'm still going to be using mine. I'm still going to have easy this cameras kitted out throughout my house. No hesitation whatsoever. I'm just looking forward to the updates that make things all better. Thanks very much. I'll see you in the next one. Toodles.